Okay, so uh, our task for today uh, is to uh, complete the analysis of some basic visual design principles. We left uh, uh, on, on Tuesday while, while talking about uh, um, grids and grid layouts. And uh, we observed that in many cases, uh, uh, the design of complex, uh, let's say, uh, interfaces relies uh, on a set of uh, alignment rules, uh, okay, that help the user in a way, well, first of all, they give a sense of order, okay, something is nice to see, not something that is just thrown <laughs> on the screen uh, at random. But also it helps uh, um, the users decode the relationship between different items. For example, the indentation, so aligning to a, uh, let's say, inner grid uh, level is a sort of uh, subordination in, in concept. So in a way, uh, what is aligned on the second, uh, uh, say, uh, orange line is we, is we uh, say, interpret it as being part of the title which is specified on the first alignment line, okay? Just simple, simple tricks, uh, just a, a few pixels are, uh, are needed, but uh, it may help users not getting lost, uh, say, in a sea of options, but uh, uh, seeing them in groups uh, and maybe only focusing on the group that is needed in this moment, where uh, supposedly they will find uh, the function that they're seeking. Hmm? Um, uh, it comes to my mind the, 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 the settings page of, of Zoom, no? the video conference room. I, I don't know if you ever went to the, to the settings page on the website. Uh, it's a really 10 pages lo uh, long uh, page of different options with basically no, no grouping or no relationship among each other. So you always end up uh, going back and forth several times before you're sure you found uh, the, um, the options that you're seeking for. Okay because they didn't pay attention to uh, navigation within the page. And as we very quickly already mentioned, uh, this uh, um, say alignment or distancing or uh, consistent spacing is something for which uh, visual designers are maniacal, basically. So they, they, uh, they set often very strict rules. Hmm? So these, these rules belong to uh, sort of uh, uh, technology-specific guidelines. Hmm? Remember, uh, last week we talked about uh, uh, general principles, but then we said, okay, according to a given technology, when you choose a toolkit, they will have, pre they will have uh, precise guidelines. They will tell you uh, the color and the size of each and every button and the spacing on each of every uh, form items and so on. Hmm? So these are, for example, the guidelines uh, that came from Microsoft for Visual Studio in 2019. This was at the time of the first versions uh, of Windows 10, basically. Mm -hmm. Right now, something already has changed. If you go and see the, the more recent versions, they, the, the look and feel is slightly evolved, basically. But you, you still have some rules, some strong rules, basically. Mm -hmm. uh, so this slide is just a sort of a documentation. Nothing prevents you from creating any kind of interface, uh, but uh, they will tell you if you are using this uh, alignment, you are consistent, you are being consistent with the other, in this case, desktop, desktop applications, and the users will you know, find, find their way more easily uh, across the interface that you design. And uh, uh, we saw that these ops with uh, sorry, these requirements uh, uh, were always present since the, the dawn of the first uh, uh, graphical user interfaces. Okay, so here we have uh, the first version of the Java look and feel the guidelines, 1999. I don't know where you born the date at the time, um, but they already had uh, very strict uh, uh, guidelines. You see that the number of pixels are, are lower. Uh, because the resolution of displays was lower at the time, okay? So why now we have uh, maybe 24 pixel for spacing between different form items. At that time, we only had 12 or 11, okay? Um, 
because the pixels were fatter, basically. Mm -hmm. um, but this comes <laughs> uh, around many times uh, because when you are changing the technology, the, uh, we had maybe big screens and then uh, small smartphones started to appear, small in terms of resolution. So we had, you had to shrink down your spacing again to fit into a, a smartphone. And now smartphones have a, a higher resolution than the many displays, many maybe cheap, cheap computers. And so again, you have to redefine it. Hmm? And it's always hmm, difficult to get it right. But in any case, you always have this, apart from the number of pixels, uh, it's, uh, you know, you always have some vertical lines, uh, some horizontal lines uh, where everything is, is aligned, okay? And if you follow these rules, uh, it's, all, it's even easier for you hmm? because you have some sort of regularity in the kind of interface you're creating. This is a sort of a usage of, of alignment, uh, let's say, uh, points uh, at the micro level, uh, inside a single form, a single dialog window, and so on. But the same principle can also be applied at the macro level, at the level of the, of the page or screen, uh, full screen. And there is a sort of a terminology for describing the structure of uh, um, a, a grid layout where, like, say, we, we mentioned this visually. Uh, just imagine you are uh, creating you know, a, an interface on a screen. Imagine you have the full screen for the moment, okay? Or the full web page. Mm. Um, so we may or may not have a margin that to protect basically the, the content of the page from the, the edges of the screen, whether we have any other, uh, maybe, uh, you know, the, the base level from the new Macs uh, that uh, is are eating part of the page and so on. But in any case, you may want to have uh, some margin in order not to avoid having, you know, the text uh, or your text just on the edge, on the on the edge pixel of the screen. Inside this margin, hmm, you can decide, def define a set of, of columns. Hmm. Uh, in this picture, the columns are the white spaces, while the pink ones are the separators between the, the columns. Hmm. They're called gutters, and this come from all the, let's say, mechanical manual type typography, when they has actually to some strips of metal <laughs> to separate uh, spaces where uh, text were, were uh, laid out. So we decide, we divide basically the, the, the space into an equal number of columns, or into a number of equal size columns, okay? Uh, they may look too many to you, okay? So maybe it's, they are too narrow, but the idea uh, is not to, uh, let's say, to use a single column for layout, but to use them as a reference for uh, um, having some discrete points uh, for defining width. Mm -hmm. So we, we will never talk about, uh, okay, this form or this window or this article will be 27 pixels wide. We will size items in terms of integral number of columns. Mm -hmm. And uh, so for example, these blocks here, these uh, blue boxes here, and these blue, blue blocks in, the, in this picture in the, on, on the left-hand side, um, occupy a fixed number of columns. Of course, if I am occupying uh, four columns here, I'm eating the, the space for the four, col four columns plus separators minus the uh, left and right separators that, of course, uh, keep the element uh, distant. So if I have a, um, a column of, uh, I don't know, 50 pixels and the gutter separation of 10, then this size will be 50, 100, 150, 200 plus uh, 10, 20, 30. So it will be 230. So these sizes are not actually multiples, multiple sizes of, of an even number because there's this, uh, you know, um, four columns and three gutters. So we always have, have an n minus one uh, number there. But it doesn't matter, okay? The, our eye doesn't really need uh, the proportionality of the sizes. Uh, it, our eye is satisfied with the regularity, okay? 
So uh, in these cases, uh, they decided in this layout to leave the first and the last column empty to give some breathable space uh, to the interface and have two basic columns with a title and a content behind them. And each of these uh, would be of four columns. In this case, the page was divided as it's usual in 12 columns. You may remember from Bootstrap uh, that is the rule. Okay, normally 12 is a nice number because it can be divided by two, by three, by four, by six. Uh, and, uh, um, and so you can uh, decide your uh, proportion. Um, this is for the vertical layout. And the same goes for the horizontal layout. Hmm? Uh, horizontal layout, uh, horizontal alignment uh, is you, more flexible in a way because the vertical space uh, is often flexible. You are able to scroll uh, or mm, while you go down the page, uh, the contents will vary. So we have the titles, we have the menus, uh, uh, and then we have the real content, and then we have the footer, and each of them will have their own rule, their own spacing, uh, and so it's uh, in a way mm, less demanding, <coughs> less demanding, but <coughs> sorry. When we have some breaking points, so we are starting the content that should be aligned. Even if, for example, the right title here would be longer, so it will take two rows, okay? Uh, I cannot shift down only the second article to keep this separation space. Okay, I will have to shift down both articles so that uh, you know, visually we are saying, okay, this is the area for the titles and this is the area for the articles and all the articles will, will start at the same, um, let's say, uh, horizontal grid line. These grid lines, in some cases, uh, you can decide, say, uh, um, a minimum amount of pixels and compute everything as a, um, and the multiple of this number of pixels, but this is not, not always needed, basically. Hmm? But at least, uh, uh, try always try to be consistent. We have this grid line where the content starts. If we need to move something, we move the full grid line here, and, uh, and everything will move, not just a single block. Hmm? So we are saying, you see these two grid lines that are, that are uh, highlighted in the picture. Here, at this, at this level, the titles end, and at this level, the content will start. We are defining this spacing, basically. So if we want, of course, the layout to adapt to the content, the title will push down the first grid line, then this separation will be maintained, and at this point, we are, we are going to start the content. Hmm? Uh, of course, we are not designing no, uh, a paper leaflet uh, where we can measure and we already have the content that we want to put on this A4 piece of paper. Um, we are planning a layout where we still don't know, in many cases, the content that we are going to write. Will it be a long article? Will it be a short article? Mm -hmm. So we are not defining a precise layout. We are defining layout rules that should be also automated as much as possible. Hmm? And so we, this I say, trick of working with grid lines uh, lets us uh, to define some fixed point and some relationship between the elements, and then everything will resize accordingly to, to the real content. Hmm? And uh, uh, the combination of all of this gives you the layout of the page. Hmm? So you may have some horizontal space for the header, some horizontal space for the title, for the subheading and for the content. And maybe the header will keep, will uh, say, occupy the whole width of the page, but the article, the content would be divided in four different uh, equal spaced columns. In this case, uh, we only have eight columns if I'm not wrong. Mm -hmm. um, so there is this division that we mm, draw at the beginning and then we try to be consistent with them. Uh, between vertical elements, we already have a fixed uh, separation. Between horizontal elements uh, is something that we should design, we should decide. Hmm? It's not so constant because, uh, as we say, the, the, the vertical content tend to, to vary. Uh, of course, for doing this kind of job, uh, there are a lot of libraries. Uh, the most famous one, or the one that you know, popularized, say, uh, in a strongest way, the, the 
12 column uh, grid it was the bootstrap library um, and okay we probably if we came from the web applications course last year we you already uh, fight it with it fought with it uh, in order to get what you what you want and the idea uh, um, of this let's say flexible grids is that they let they let you define some uh, uh, layout rules but they let also you to um, set these rules so that they can automatically adapt uh, in a, they call it the responsive way to different screen sizes okay so that was a problem hmm, at the beginning I say of the smartphone period where every smartphone has a different resolution a different aspect ratio so people got crazy as actually uh, um, uh, coding a lot of special cases okay oh, because in that model of phone uh, the, the icon doesn't fit uh, or the menu is too small and so on um, so this kind of libraries that the frameworks uh, will help us to resize redistribute and even ho show, show or hide or choose between different alternative versions of the same element according to some macro level to uh, choices so there are some standard sizes extra small small medium large extra large and so on and then you only have to decide or to imagine your layout into these five standard sizes and then whether this is the physical size of the screen or whether this is the logical size of the window that has been resized you don't care anymore you only know that if you have so many pixels you have the, the layout should be rearranged in a different way of course we can do that only if we have a, a rule based layout okay this should be on the same line this should be on separate light and so on we cannot do that with physical measurements with pixels huh? there, there will be too many special case the, the actual number of pixels for the actual number width of the column will be computed by the framework not by, not by us we count the columns uh, and the framework will so translate columns into pixels take into account the actual screen size hmm? so it's a it's an effort you know that that's also one of the reasons why uh, this visual layout is uh, maybe more the tool of the interaction designer than of the graphical expert graphical experts tend to, tend to tweak the pixels uh, here we have to program uh, uh, an interface which is going to adapt hmm? so this is a very trivial example of the same content that will be rendered in four three two three two or one column according to the screen size just by playing with the bootstrap classes okay but you are you are more css experts than me bootstrap is not the only design system that works on, on grids uh, um, there are other examples uh, around but uh, the basic idea is that the visual designers tend to find thinking in grids in alignment points very useful because they let you abstract from the details uh, and focus more again on the relationship between the different blocks these blocks will have this role and this role should be related in some way with the others mm. so for example mm, the newspaper website we have this column which has a given size those columns here that are uh, i draw i drew the, um, the grid lines in green there is some rhythm here three uh, news uh, uh, and some others are occupying the whole width of the page so basically what they designed was the main column width compared to the side column so I have to decide the ratio between the main content and the side content. I have to decide about the margins, left and right. I have to decide about the separation. Even. This could be absolute values or relative values. Once I have this, okay, the right column is already defined. Uh, maybe it's a three to one ratio, it looks like. And then the main column, I have different uh, types of, you see, when you go horizontally, everything is laid out. Everything has a consistent spacing, a consistent alignment. Some news are occupy the whole column width. Some news occupy 
only one third of the column. So again, I have a subdivision of or second level subdivision inside the main column of three sub columns with this green grid line. And uh, while the main articles, the one that occupy everything vertically, always have this uh, same vertical alignment. Even if they are not consecutive, even if they are not adjacent, they are farther away, but they, this picture will always occupy the same um, space in the page. And what we see is that they are trying to reuse the same uh, division here for this small, let's say, call out to different titles. Hmm? So basically, uh, this width here is also reused in this one, two, and three news. Hmm? This one falls uh, in a, outside the, the main grid lines, but the size of this box uh, is the same as this one. So this is also um, the result of a computation to the, the main uh, full width of the page is also divided in three and the size of this three is the same as the first column in which the main the last portion is divided so uh, it's not by chance okay they try to find some key measurements so uh, the full page one third of the page and, uh, uh, and the separation between the left and right and then everything was dividing so uh, at first sight, you may see some sort of disorder, or some strange position, but when you look at it, you see that actually it's very regular. And this means that uh, it can be automatically generated and automatically, let's say, um, reconfigured in a very easy way because there are only uh, a couple of rules, three, three, three to one and one third. This one third rules is also what, what causes this left column, the one with the picture, to be narrower than the one for the title. So they also have more space uh, for writing meaningful titles. Uh, you see that this division here is not 50 50. It may seem strange, but it's actually exploiting the one third rule that was used for defining the. So this is actually. Uh, one third or or four thirds uh, of the of the column, mm -hmm. because you are not dividing in three this space, you are dividing in three the whole space. But anyway, some of this have to sit down and define uh, those rules. And also for other kind of interfaces, this is very uh, much much easier because basically it's a table. Mm -hmm. So here in Stack Overflow, uh, every item is of the same type. Mm. We don't have shorter or longer articles, so it's much cleaner. And basically, it's also formatted as a table, mm. so something very predictable. And this table, of course, uh, is in a central column where we have uh, some left and right columns, uh, some borders, some separation. So the language of grids still uh, um, applies. Mm. Um, this is uh, one page from the old version of the Polytechnical website, and uh, for one, I I have good uh, say opinions about this page. It looks all this look ugly because it's not uh, stylish with the uh, too pale face. Uh, but from the point of view of the alignment, uh, I think it's very clear. Okay, because you have a lot. Of, basically, you have a lot of information if you if you see because for every item, you have the name of the course, uh, you have the credit structure, we have the language, the code, and everything is very in very clean terms. Uh, they are using uh, fonts and styles in a consistent way to highlight. Uh, there's no, I think, risk of, uh, uh, of confusion, okay? The number of credits, the teacher, and so on. We have a strong vertical alignment and also a strong horizontal alignment. We have a spacing between the different courses, which is, of course, slightly higher than the spacing between the lines. So all the rules are basically applied, are consistent. Um, nearly always, because for example here, we have one item, insegnamento scelta, okay, the free credits uh, line. I would have added one empty line below. Hmm? 
they don't have the credit structure for this, so they compacted this. I would have kept the spacing instead of just collapsing it, okay? So there's more details where the, the general box structure has some exceptions, so we have to decide whether the, the box will be different or we keep the consistency of the boxes and maybe they will leave out, we like, we leave, leave out some information. Hmm? Like here, we don't have the teacher name yes, uh, yet, but we are not collapsing the columns. Okay, so the same should be for, for the rows, or even, even here. Hmm? So it, when your eye takes a rhythm in reading the page, uh, you are risking to overlook some of these items. You, you risk of your eye, you have to interpret this, this line here as the subheading of the previous one, because each of the other ones has a heading and a subheading. Hmm? So let's keep the rhythm. And then there are some exceptions with this uh, Oppure, this or, which gives you the choices uh, in, in, in building the. I, I, I'm not aware of any criticality of interpretation with this uh, uh, layout, okay? So this or was quite well understood, I think. Maybe you tell me differently. And this is the current layout. Or it was the current layout some months ago, so they are playing with it again. Um, we see that we, it has more columns, maybe because today the screens are wider, or I don't know why. So, you know, this credit structure is not below the title, but is now uh, living in its uh, separate column. So basically, we have. We are asking for wider information space, uh, and maybe it will be shorter. It makes sense uh, for computer screens. It doesn't make sense with the smartphones because uh, on smartphone I should have a more, let's say, pushing more the vertical space and uh, and uh, um, conserving as much as possible the horizontal space. Anyway, uh, also the language. It's also designed with an icon, but it has its own column, its own spacing. Before it was much more, you see, it was just an icon beside the title. So we have extra information, extra structure here. The structure makes it a, a bit heavier, probably. We have horizontal grid lines, grid, uh, sorry, lines, separation lines, uh, that was not were not necessary before. Okay, before we had just some spacing, and we had no trouble in, in grouping. Because we had the consistent spacing and the difference of, uh, um, say, black and gray, black and gray text uh, of different weights, uh, that helps us group visually the elements. In this case, uh, we don't have any, let's say, visual grouping except uh, from these lines. So we are using more or ink, basically, to convey the same information that maybe with spacing would have been easier. But of course. If the page is wider, uh, uh, tracking the same alignment is more, is more difficult to the human eye. So maybe actually you need this grid. And these grids are also, and this is probably a mistake, uh, um, of alternating colors, which is not very visible on the screen, but you see there are different shades of gray on, on even and odd uh, numbered uh, lines. And it's adding extra weight to the visual appearance. So mm, today we tend uh, to, to design a sort of minimalistic interfaces. Put the minimum uh, amount of items in, on the screen that will help understanding. Otherwise, again, uh, we have the alternating lines and this creates some problems. At least uh, I am aware of some students that were confused uh, that didn't come, uh, didn't come from a polytechnic, they came from other universities. They were confused teacher in this case that came from another university and uh, you see one course a second course oppure uh, and other two courses or other two courses or other two courses and so on and it happens that this or at least the first ones okay okay what 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 um, what really means is that you have the first course which is mandatory and then you can choose between the second and the third and then you can choose between the fourth and the fifth and so on, okay? You know that. But visually, you can also interpreter, you can take in this way, you can take the first two courses 
or the, these two, or these two, or this group of three, and so on. So visually, you have ambiguity. You can group them in different ways. Okay, and this this teacher, this colleague, told me, I, I, I don't understand why some users have more credits than others. I said, what are you saying? Oh, yes, because some user can only take 16 credits and other have to take uh, uh, 20. Because of this, say, misinterpretation of the visual layout. What could be the solution? It's an easy one. Don't change the background color here. So gray one, gray two, gray one. No, let's put everything in the same color. Maybe also suppress the grid lines, the division lines, so that these groups here will be on a single cell, or at least on a cells with a common background color. So that it will reinforce these groupings. Okay, this is a group. Inside this group, we can, you may choose. It's, it's, not, it's not easy to find this kind of, uh, I, I, I never realized it before they told me. Because for me it was normal, I was accustomed to the previous version, I knew exactly what it was the structure of the study plan. So it, it, my brain couldn't say, see the ambiguity. You need an external user, you need somebody that looks at the interface with, with fresh eyes to detect some kind of problem. Hmm? And then the solution is simple once you say you see the problem. Hmm? Uh, because the basic assumption that this is a list of courses is wrong. This is not a list of courses. There is a courses and some alternatives. And but the structure is just a, of, a, of a linear uh, table. Okay, uh, and also, you know, the rules of alignment uh, always existed and will, will continue to exist, uh, but they are applied in a different way. This is a comparison of a, a page from Amazon where you enter your shipping address, I, can, I think, and how it was in 2015 and how it was in 2019, and basically today is the same. Uh, the content are the same. We have a strong alignment in both cases, uh, but uh, in 2015, they used the convention of having a center alignment with the titles on the left and the content on the right, okay? Uh, they, uh, they, we had the convention of having smaller or longer text boxes to hint the user the amount of text they had to, to write. Um, it was perfect at the time. Now we are preferring this kind of layout on the right, which uh, is more vertically developed. And we can guess why, because mobile devices are now the majority of, uh, say, uh, accesses. So you need, uh, with a mobile device, you cannot fill this form because you, you will have to constantly scroll left and right to read the question and write the answer. Uh, in this case, you just go from, from top to bottom. Uh, we are still have the alignment rules to associate the title with the box, so the spacing between the label and the box is very small, and among different boxes is much larger, larger, so we don't have any ambiguity whether the label applies to the box above or below. Um, and everything you know, is, is boxed on the same, on the same side. Again, always alignment rules, but applied in a different way according, say, to, to the evolution of technology, of, of style, of, of taste, and so on. Um, there are some curious stuff. Uh, for example, the, the postal code is actually very few digits. And so uh, here, it was uh, the zip code was a smaller window, but here we prefer, say, the regularity than you know, the, the suggesting the size of the information. Uh, in this kind of list, we also have a, a, a drawback. 
that uh, the, the individual items uh, cannot be, let's say, uh, distinguished except by reading the label because they are visually all identical. So I, if I put this page in, uh, I don't know, Japanese, we really have no clue about what's going on. Okay, uh, in a form which is more structured like this, maybe we can guess something more according to, to different elements. Um, not, but don't, in this case, it doesn't really uh, apply, but just remember that you are forcing the user to read the label. It cannot infer what you are asking from the position or the size. You are not exploiting any sort of grouping of elements. Hmm? Um, okay. But just um, example. Hmm? So basically, uh, how did you select, how did they select the, 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 the width of the page? Always you should start with the worst case. What is the biggest part or the longest text uh, that they need to write or that they need to enter? And then you start uh, with designing the form, starting from this, which is your actually uh, size that you must uh, support uh, and uh, um, consider the rest. If you have to, some text uh, that needs to roll from two different lines, uh, Usually, you should left align and not justify the text. Uh, on the web, justify text is very difficult to read. It's very um, uh, heavy to read. Mm -hmm. And uh, try to remember that the human mind is already very uh, effective at finding alignment. So if you align elements correctly, then you don't need extra visuals, extra um, say lines, uh, or containers and so on, because they will be picked up immediately. If you have some you know, uh, uh, wiggly alignment, something which is slightly off, uh, then you are creating a lot of confusion and uh, uh, the, the interpretation will, uh, will suffer. Okay, so remember at the beginning, we have uh, the three main ingredients, uh, test, layout, and colors, and colors are are a very powerful weapon, but also a very dangerous one. Okay, so this is an example of, of course, what I hope you will never do. And, uh, but of course, it's a, uh, it's not a real, I don't think, I don't know whether, it's, it's very famous, but I don't know whether it was a joke or somebody really thought uh, this could be a good interface. Hmm? You don't even understand what they, what they are doing here, so there's so much confusion. But, okay, this may be a joke website, but remember that in many cases, your real website will look like this thanks to advertising. So you may have a very clean design. You have very good choose, choice of alignments, of colors, of, of size, and then you decide that you need some you know, background uh, advertising, you need some pop-ups, you need some banners here and there, and they will really kill your layout. Hmm? Uh, we will come on an advertising issue in a moment. Hmm? Okay, so colors are important because they need, they, they are useful you know, for giving priority. You remember the rules of Gestalt. Uh, uh, different colors or stronger colors uh, attract attention, similar colors or same colors uh, suggest similarity, suggest relationship. Hmm? Of course, the rule number one is always consistency. Hmm? Title should, have, should always be, you know, light blue, or text should be always be dark gray, or whatever color you choose, but then you stick with this, hmm? consistency. Um, assign meaning to color, basically, could be a good, uh, let's say, summary of this rule. And also use a, a limited number of colors. Decide for a palette in your website and use the, just those colors that were defined in the palette, maybe with some variations, lighter, darker, or stronger. Mm. Um, and also always try to find an expert no, in defining these colors for you. Um, 
one rule of thumb could be try to look at your website in grayscale. Color is useful, but it should not be the only, um, let's say, um, visual element uh, for giving you some information. So if something is a title, for example, the title of the question, it's good to use color to highlight it. But if you are, if you are missing the color, we still recognize it as a title due to the size of the font to the, to the alignment. So color is good for reinforcing some information, but we should not rely on color alone, okay, to convey some, some information. So never have just two buttons, a, a red and a green one, and say push the red button. They should be labeled with okay and cancel, or go and stop or whatever. So we have the label, and also you have the color that will help you. Because a lot of people, maybe we are, uh, have vision problems. So there are some, some sort of color blindness, so they will see colors uh, in a different way. Uh, and so some differences could not be so evident to them. But if you rely on the contrast, black and white contrast, gray and so on, it's always perceivable. Even if you have maybe uh, a computer or a smartphone in full light in the sunshine, the colors will be all washed out, okay? So you will uh, lose the strength of the colors and the, the difference you can perceive are smaller than the difference that maybe the, the, well, the designer that uh, who had a very big and nice screen in a very quiet uh, office could uh, also appreciate more small variations, but in the, say in the wide, <laughs> Uh, you cannot rely on that. Um, uh, so, for example, we have this uh, version of the website of Politecnico where we have some hints. Okay, some the different section of the website are marked in a way with different colors. Okay, this uh, light blue and uh, orange and for teaching and uh, red for research. Uh, and uh, purple for enterprises uh, and yellow for international or whatever. So one hopes that these colors will be used consistently throughout all the websites. Uh, we'll find that probably is not so true. Um, but in the main pages, yes, is keep the consistency. The problem is that these colors get lost. Okay, if you, if you there are fi five colors are too many to remember, okay, so if I ask you, don't look, what, what's the meaning of purple? Mm, probably we, we don't know, but I don't know, I don't know if, you, if you notice in the, in the signs that we find in the corridors and the halls for finding classrooms, these signs in a way are, co are using these colors, some of them, some of these colors. So all the classroom signs are in orange. And the websites associate or, uh, yes, or orange with the, the teaching part of the polytechnic. Mm -hmm. Some signs are red, some are purple. Mm -hmm. uh, and they, there should be some, they plan for some consistency. Mm -hmm. So then planning is not the same as being able to execute it in, the, in detail, mm -hmm. but there was a good idea. Uh, the problem is that the association of color with the area is a weak association. It can be lost easily. And for example, here in, in black and white, you don't see it because some of these colors have similar luminance, similar lightness. So it's not so appealing to the eye. Um, so if you choose some color coding, try to choose well the colors so that they're very easy to recognize and Use them everywhere uh, so that you, your user will learn the, the mapping, the association between the color and their meaning. Especially if you are creating some association out of nothing, out of the blue. So that there's no common knowledge that teaching is orange. <laughs> it's not a, a, some background information. That, while maybe red is danger, mm, okay, something that you can rely your user to, to know instinctively. Um, Orange is teaching, of course, is not. Uh, when you are, when somebody is planning a color scheme,
for a website, always uh, find some, okay, professional, some expert to define a palette of colors. So basically, uh, the web designers or people that are you know, creating web pages or also creating, say, paper documentation should always use the colors that are prescribed in the style guide of your website, of your application, or of your institution. So there are some preferred colors, like this one, and there may be some variations if you need to have a lighter version or a stronger version, they will always tell, they will always tell you actually the color components that you should use, uh, the, the, the allowed variations, okay? So there are people that are studying those combinations and are telling you, oh, you can only use these colors. Don't feel limited because actually they are, they are relieving you for, from deciding actually good combinations, colors, they are already telling you which one to use. This is an example of the official color palette from Polytechnic for the style guide of some years ago. Um, but you can find on a lot of websites uh, that are publishing, let's say, ready to use palettes. So you can browse them and say, okay, this color scheme like is okay, it's okay for my uh, website, I, just, I will just copy it, okay? So um, it's uh, always, somebody else has created that. Uh, uh, for example, there's this website, but it's not the only one. There are many of them. Uh, in this case, it's Color Lovers. Uh, has some palette section when a lot of people just decide to study some palette, they publish that. You choose the one that you like and then stick with that. Hmm? Some are ugly, but uh, uh, some are good. And there are also tools. Uh, if, you, if you do a, just a Google search, uh, this is just one page uh, for checking the contrast. Uh, of your foreground to background uh, separation. Uh, for example, you see that here, this gray text uh, on to white uh, um, background uh, is not very readable. Hmm? These are the Google colors uh, from, from Google Chrome. And this is not a, a, a real problem because this color is only used for disable the interaction item. So if you have a disable link uh, or disable button, it will be in this color. You cannot read it, but okay, maybe it's better for you because you couldn't operate on it anyway. Uh, but you see that this set of color were, was tested to be readable and to stand out enough uh, both from white and, and dark backgrounds on, on different type of backgrounds. It's not easy, there are very few colors that are easy to read on dark and, and, and gray backgrounds. But if they find these colors, of course, of course they can play also with changing the background and keeping the color and so on. Uh, so again, uh, in some cases you have to increase the size of a dark color to make it readable uh, on a dark background, on a darker background of course, or increase the size, the font size of a, of a, of a um, clear color when you have a, back, a white background and so on. So all these tricks, again, uh, the suggestion try to find uh, some style guide, some style library, and use it consistently just in your design because our focus is on the content, not just on, on, the, on the deciding them, yes? Oh yeah, you're right. Okay, so uh, the question was actually that these colors look similar, but they are different. And thanks for, the, for noticing that. Okay, they color that at first sight, this blue looks like the same of this blue, but they already took into account uh, that the perception of this color over white is different, and actually the, the, the number, the, the color number is different, yes. Um, whether you can translate automatically, I'm sure there are a lot of formulas out there, but uh, the final judgment is always uh, a good designer, okay? That uh, can, can tweak uh, uh, the actual shade uh, to be well, uh, well understood. So uh, having the same color perception on a different background, you see there, there are a lot of tricks, no, uh, visual tricks, uh, like you say, okay, these lines are parallel, but you see those skews and so on. No? Because our mind is interpreting everything in T 
keeping the context into account. So here we are changing the context to black and white and we want to have the same end result and so we can. Uh, I'm not aware of any pool, foolproof uh, let's say formula for doing that. Uh, so that's why it's always best to rely on something that was hand designed uh, by experts. Um, I want to show a couple of examples um, about color, color coding. So you know this interface. And uh, it's a collection of mistakes. Uh, of course, you have some slots and you can reserve to, to some slots. And there is a color coding. So first of all, we have five different colors. You see on the top. We need a, lab, a, legend, a legend to understand what these colors are. So if you need a legend, you're <laughs> there's always something wrong okay because the users need to read okay this uh, uh, blue what does blue mean okay it uh, means available and uh, this is red what does red mean okay it cannot be reserved and so on so you need to have an indirection okay you have some information and you have to translate this information into uh, into the real meaning by the way if you have some sort of color blindness, you cannot make out the meaning of the boxes. Okay, so if uh, you have some problem in, you know, in the green-red uh, difference, uh, there is no other clue that will tell me whether this box is red or green. Only the color alone gives the information. So this second warning. First, you need a legend, so you are using too many colors and they're not so ready to be understood. Second, color along links uh, the box uh, with the meaning. Mm -hmm. And then we have uh, some strange things that uh, we have a slot from 9 to 13. So this slot here. And this slot has a different color from 9 to 10 rather than the color from 10 to 13. And my mind always goes, why? What does it mean? Does it mean that from nine to 10, something different happens? Does it mean that this lot uh, is 25% uh, full? So I, the f at first sight, I imagine this was a fill level. So something that becomes, this is the slot and it fills gradually until it's all, uh, all full. I try to give some interpretation to this very strong visual clue. You know, these colors are strong. And the difference between here and there is strong. So there should be some meaning to that. Okay? You know HTML. You know what's the meaning. It's a different cell of the table. So they put a background in the cell and another one on the other. So it was just the programmer didn't care or want to do a, a vertical scan of the HTML table. So it was just quick programming. I'm not saying lazy in this case. They're not lazy pig, people, but they overlooked this eff the effect that their design had. So actually, there's no difference between the first hour and the other three. This text here applies to the whole slot of four, of four hours against any visual suggestion. Okay, so we are having an inconsistency, the difference of color that doesn't have any difference in meaning. And another import, uh, important, why? At the same time, an important information, which is the fill level, is not visible anyway, anywhere. Sorry. So for example, we have this lot which is nearly full, 35 out of 36, and the other one, which is only 26, they are displayed in the same way. So we should say, okay, no problem, this nearly empty, is, uh, there's plenty of space, or here, hurry up, it's going to, to finish in a moment. So there's nothing, you have to read the numbers. 
you don't even have the luxury of a, a percentage say okay it's 99 percent you have to actually read the denominator and the den uh, so the um, I don't know if the nominator and denominator are the English word I don't think so um, but okay uh, the, the two parts of the fraction and do your math in your mind so uh, Probably, you know, having a slot and then filling it uh, with an amount of color that corresponds uh, to the number of places. And then the one that already booked, uh, I would put them maybe in, in gray rather than in red. Why should I attract attention to something where you, can do a, where you can't do anything? Let's draw your attention to the slot where you can do something. You can reserve something. Hmm? So. Uh, and uh, the other colors are also probably not so important, okay? So do we need so many colors or can we, do, can we do with a lesser number of colors? Two maybe, three if, if you are really stretching it and adding some other visual clues. Icons, ball face, other kind of styles uh, that will help me for uh, example, uh, where my reservations here are, are green, okay? The green is for the slot that I reserve. This is important information, more important than the, than the, the other ones. Um, the past slots, uh, do I really care about the past slots? The past is a timeline that goes left to right. So everything from yesterday is in the past. Should they even see it? Uh, and and so on. Hmm? Uh, it's a reservation is not active, so don't show it. You are showing me a slot and say, okay, you cannot reserve this. Uh, why are you showing it to me? Okay. Um, and I guess that we have been for ten minutes on this page. Please raise your hand if anybody read this text in the blue box. They put it here because it was important. Nobody reads it. Nobody even filters something here to read. Because our, our eyes went many times from the legend of colors to the table of, of the slots. We always skip this box. Okay, there could be one million dollar price, but we never saw it. Hmm? Um, Okay, uh, basically, the second sentence is totally useless. You say that, okay, we are two slots, uh, they're open from 9 to 18, in two slots uh, from 9 to 13 and from 14 to 18. We already see that. This information is useless. It's already standing out from the table. We didn't have any problems in understanding that. Basically, if we had to read the sentence, that would have been more difficult, okay? And also to see that the way we have a, a hole here from one to two, for some reason, that is here, it's visible, and uh, in the sentence, you, have, you would have to do your mind comparison, okay? Um, so, that talks about uh, also reading or finding information. You have a lot of information on, on one page. How do you move uh, across the different pages, parts of the page? Uh, how do you read the text? Uh, how do you get uh, this? Uh, um, not everything is on one page, uh, and so we have a structure of information, and the visual layout uh, should help the user move across the task. We as you are creating services that allow the users to execute their task, to reach some goal, and so they should be able uh, to uh, to follow the right path, uh, the right navigation. It's not just uh, randomly seeing different pages, and it's going in the right sequences and uh, um, choosing which sequence to go and closing it, and. Uh, 
there's nothing special here. We have a lot of navigation tools, tools, a lot of uh, widgets, lots of conventions for helping user navigation. If you open any web page or any application, there's a good portion of the interface which is about navigation, about moving to related pages or to related sections. Uh, for example, we have all the uh, list of, of buttons, of items, of, of links. It can also be long list. We are you exploited the continuity principle, saying, okay, if you have some list, it may probably continue. It's not worrying us. Uh, we have gestures that we are used, the click, the double click, the swipe, the right and left uh, on this element to, to select uh, uh, elements. We have uh, the conventional form language, so step boxes, uh, text areas. Uh, we have the conventional desktop interface, uh, menus, uh, icons, uh, toolbars, uh, and so on. And keyboard accelerators. So if, if, if you think uh, all of these items are just for navigation, for example, yeah, this, we have a, an icon that is for navigating to that, that specific function. Finding that functionality across all the possible functionality. Hmm? And it takes uh, no, a good portion of your screen. And then you have the content. But around the content, you have all the options for operating on the content, for finding the content, for uh, doing some action on, on that. So I, I'm going quick here because there are quite, um, say, normal stuff. Um, and of course, we already know that we have lists, menus, and so on. Uh, the difficult part is not uh, creating a menu, but is deciding the structure of the menu, deciding which structure you are presenting information. Is it something linear, a sequence of steps? Is it something hierarchical, like a set of categories that are divided in subcategories and so on? Or is it something which is more of a graph structure with arbitrary links between different parts? And one tempting uh, uh, organization is, of course, the taxonomy of the tree structure. We have a menu here. For example, um, a shopping website. We have a first level category here. And then we have a second level category in this line. And the third level with these titles. And the fourth level with these smaller product categories. So the people who are managing this website decided uh, on a four level classification of, it, or, of their items. Helping the user make a choice in a top-down way. And so they can find, if I'm looking for some shoes, probably I, can, I will not go into bike accessories. Hmm? Uh, so I don't need to read the, the four level items uh, if I don't like or don't care about the third level ones and so on. If I'm playing tennis, I won't, I won't select cycle, and so on. So if we have a long list of items, instead of putting them you know, alphabetically, you, we are grouping them by similarity, which is more complex than it seems. It seems nice at first, but when you are creating a, a classification, very soon you are starting to create exceptions. Um, for example, uh, camp and hike, climb, cycle, fitness, run, pedal, snow, travel. These are sports or activities. And then we have men, women, kids. We are changing the rule. We are no longer about activities and we are about the type. And then footwear, which is again a fourth point of view. And finally, more. Great. If you are, you have, if you have a more category, you are doomed. Uh, your classification doesn't work. Means that it doesn't work. So 
So if I'm looking for some running shoes, should I go into run, into men, or into footwear? Are there, are they alternative way of finding the same information? So probably I can find my running shoes in the free submenu. Same items replicated in different categories? Maybe, I don't know, from the screen. But if it is so, I would have put visually just a divider here, a separator. Okay, you have this menu is divided into three sections. You can select one item from the first section, which is activities, one from the type of person, and one from the well, footwear. It's so important that it deserves their own category. No, it's easy. No, just you know, one little white vertical line here and one there would be enough. And try to get rid of more. Hmm? If this is the rule. I don't know if this is the rule. Hmm? So actually, if we come back to the first rule of usability, don't make me think. Uh, actually, before clicking on one of these items, I need to think. I need to ask myself a question, and I'm not sure about the answer. I need to try and see. Okay, so uh, hierarchy are very powerful tools for, say, condensing in a very short space a lot of navigation, uh, but uh, they are very difficult to get right. Uh, there, are, there are some rules uh, actually about uh, creating trees, uh, being consistent with the semantics, and try to think not about the product categories, but about the user actions. So what, are, what is the user willing to do, and how do I organize the user tasks into category? Hmm? We, uh, we started from user needs, we started from the uh, tasks the user needs to per, uh, perform, and so why don't we use the same terminology that we have, we have already checked with the users in this case? Hmm? And uh, limiting the number of levels and trying to have similar or consistent uh, levels. Uh, always cover all the possibilities, so never leave some, some holes uh, or no overlapping. Um, and this, you know, there are books uh, on this, uh, on how to organize taxonomies, you know, this, uh, topic of choosing the right labels and choosing the right structure is called information architecture. So architecture like uh, putting things in relationship to each other, but we are not putting you know, walls, uh, we are putting uh, items there. Um, coming back to the, our reservation tools, uh, the screen that we shown was the last uh, of a sequence. So even here we are talking about navigation, okay? So you want to reserve uh, a classroom or a study room, and you go here. The first page you see is this one. It's okay, it's not so bad. Uh, we have uh, three different options to choose from. This is not, well, maybe clear or not, are these supposed to be step one, two, and three, or three different alternatives? This layout is not so clear, but maybe cl let's click on uh, our studio and see what happens. What happens is that uh, this part remains the same, and now a second box appears. And this is confusing. Because, of, of course, my action was taken into account because I clicked here and something happened. But what happened? Actually, what happened is that I have a new menu, or second level menu, or second level choice, bound to the selection that I did in the first place. But what is the visual indication that these second level choices are only the choices for the Aule Studio? I, 
at least would expect uh, this to be shaded in a different color. Okay, you selected this, put it in, into you know, color the background and uh, and make it uh, make it bold so that it stands out that this is the selected one, and so the the rest uh, would apply to that. It's a subset of that, or maybe still better, put this window here, under. So this we have an ex this sign here is very often used for expanding items. So I click here, it will expand, the arrow will turn down and will open some space. And in this new space, we have the second level choice. Maybe with a little indentation to the right. In that case, it would not be ambiguous. It would be very clear. We are expanding a choice, we have the second level choices. You don't like it, okay, you expand the other choice. The, one, the first one will close and the second one will open, like a, an, an accordion, basically. No, the content of the second of the choices are put uh, in a separate box. This box is formatted in the same way as the first one. So there's nothing that's, that is telling me these are second level and these are the first level choices. There's nothing that visually is telling me that. And nothing that visually is telling me that this box is related to the first option, except Aula Studio, which this string here is identical to that string. Is it by chance? Is it the indication that it wants? Okay, so it doesn't take much to correct this. Okay, it only takes an external eye to see the problem. That's why we are, we are insisting on user testing and so on, showing to other people, don't do it yourself. Uh, you are not the right person to find the error. And then, of course, we go to the third step, which the one that contains the, the page we already mentioned before. And again, uh, this part is related to the reservation. It's a third level window. And again, secondo piano di Corso Fabrizio Gilardo is here. So we selected the, sec the first item there, and we are sh uh, seeing the reservation of the second level. But we need to read and compare text in order to understand where we are. Okay, so in this case, navigation is not, uh, not good. Um, a lot of you know, visual indication, we say before the menu, we can, we have, if we have a long list of options, uh, we can have separators. If we have different groups uh, that have different meaning, like we said in the shopping website here, we have the, um, a long list of fonts, but separate section for the most recently used uh, ones and the, for the ones that are defined in the, te in the template. So it's very clear that this long list is actually composed of three sublists with different rules. We are fine with that. We are fine with understanding there are different rules uh, since we are, they are separated, so we are expecting them to be different in some way, in some way. Okay, and so we, le we learn how. So we have ev all, everything. We have the Template one, the frequently one, uh, use one, and all of them, they are alpha alphabetically ordered, so you can always find them easily by, you know, by section or by more or less going to the right, uh, uh, say, depth in the list. And uh, we, are, we are applying also the principle of uh, um, recognition rather than recall, which is one of the guidelines that you will see next week uh, in order to be able to uh, see what is the effect of what you are of the font that you're choosing instead of having to remember or to check somewhere else that this font has this appearance uh, compared to the other you don't you don't need to remember that okay uh, about navigation i think uh, you you know this page we are trying we should be trying to set conventions that help users to find information. And, okay, we have alignment here, which is very strong. We have boxes of uh, six sides, four by four. We have uh, one box which is bigger than the others. And this is also a bit disturbing because all the others are just uh, menu links. 
these are sort of uh, menu items with some explanation, which is not wrong by, the, by itself, okay? This one is a different because it contains a rolling set of news. So nothing, I, I have nothing against the news, but I wouldn't format it like a button, like the others that really are buttons. <coughs> we have colors. They are the same four colors, you know, of the Polytechnical color scheme. So does it mean that these two first boxes are related to research? No. They are reusing the same color with a different meaning. Does it mean that these purple ones are about, uh, uh, what's the word there, businesses? No, and so on, okay? So they use the color scheme, but the color scheme already ha had a meaning. They are overloading or redefining that meaning. So this helps us to unlearn the meaning. If I learned that the red was meaning uh, uh, research, in this page is not used in the same way, so I better forget the association between red and business because it will mislead me in, in this other page. It's better not to learn it because it's not used consistently. Hmm? Um, the first two boxes are very similar. Course catalog and student guide, they have the same information. If you go in the first one, if you go in the second, I, I would probably do a very quick check uh, uh, find me the, pro the, the, the program of, a, of a, the syllabus of a course, and I guess that some of you will click here and some other will click there. Because in both cases, you find the courses. And some will try to use the search engine and get frustrated because then you get the syllabus of 2017 um, and not the last one. And uh, there are some labels, so there are some boxes that are very similar in content, but they are different. So it's a game of Find the differences, okay? So it asked me to think. There are some boxes that are very, that have a very weak label. Student services. Student services is everything. We are in the student portal. So even the student guide is a student service. Uh, why should I need a different box for that? And uh, in, in, in fact, they have here to write a list of the items that you find there. But if, when I'm looking for, you know, finding the, the schedule of a course, do I need to go to the student guide, to the student services? I don't know. So it's a very poorly designed uh, classification, grouping of elements. So it doesn't lead very clearly, okay, I want this task, I should go there. But at least they are set in some convention. Okay, you know that this page is made of boxes uh, with this sort of colors. So I expect uh, that if I click on a, a red box, I should probably go to a, pa a red page or something like that, uh, where this, and, uh, and the next pages will, no, uh, will be consistent. Maybe not, okay? So what, whatever convention we are trying to learn here, there is regularity, there are colors. We are trying to learn what this color mean. Once we click, uh, everything is, is destroyed. Because for example, this page here, and this one at the bottom, use the same graphical convention of boxes, but the colors there are totally independent from the other, from the first one, and independent from the say, official one. They just put some color for, I don't know, variations or, I don't, don't ask me. I cannot make it in my mind. Hmm? So they are reusing the same interface. I wouldn't say with a different color convention. I just would say there is no color convention at all. Hmm? Like convention means that the same is reused in the same way. And some other pages use also a different graphical convention with field buttons instead of uh, boxes. And again, we have different colors. Right now, we have a green color that never appeared before. So it's outside the, 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 the official palette. It's something new. Okay. 
by, by the way we have two different greens uh, because you are never there are never enough greens in your and uh, also these colors here are this is a new is a new shade and so on so there are slight variations there's no consistency even in the which colors you use and what purpose are you using for them so each page by itself is not so bad okay uh, but when they when we are putting them together we cannot make a rule in our mind and so we will never have a, a clear path of what is happening every time we go there say okay sorry well, I uh, this for, for this page a different rule applies than for that other page so I need to read that page and learn the rule of interaction for that specific page which is different from the others so this is very very upsetting and very confusing okay this lack of uh, consistency uh, another example is a very common uh, survey tool which um, which is uh, the, 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 the Lime survey, which is using a, a, an open source tool for doing surveys, they have a lot of the navigation here is mostly based on icons. But some icons are only slightly different from each other. And so the icon for, uh, uh, you know, this icon of the users with the key and the, uh, the icon with the user without the key, what's the difference? Uh, these tools here and these tools there are the same icon in two very different contexts because these are the tools for the setting the options of the survey and these are the tools for setting the option of a question or a group of questions. But they are using the same icon, reusing it. Mm. And so maybe they are too consistent. So they are using the same elements. Uh, they don't want to change it, uh, but uh, you will not, you cannot associate to that icon one specific action because there may be different actions related to that. And in fact, when we have a, um, let's say, uh, applications with a lot of visual icons, uh, like, uh, uh, say, Optic is doing, uh, we always have some labels for setting the context. Okay, these icons are for fonts, so these are for, are for the paragraph and so on. And the, the icons which are less used, uh, which are more cryptical for, say, in their drawing, always have a specific label besides them. Mm -hmm. So we are helping the user understand what this label, what the icon mean, and at the same time, we are helping the user learn and remember the meaning of that icon that maybe is not so familiar with them. And there's a strong level of, con of consistency because if you don't look closely, you don't know whether this is Word or PowerPoint or Excel. At first sight, they're the same. So we know that we have slides here and this gives it away, it's PowerPoint. But for the text formatting, for the paragraph formatting, they are using the same icons, the same names, the same labels with the same meaning. Hmm? So they have a strong effort of uh, uniformity and the co consistency between the effect of an action, the task formatting the text, and the comments and the visual indication of uh, how to access that information. Hmm? So this is an, an example. Probably we, 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 we will not have so many options, uh, but at least uh, try to be as consistent as Office and not as the uh, Polytechno portal. Okay, um, we finish our time. Uh, in, our, in the next times, so I, uh, I I want just to spend some time next week uh, in this section that uh, ask our answer to these very important people. Uh, question, sorry, how is text uh, actually read? We already saw that text usually tend to be skipped, but, and so what can we do? And if you want to spend some time, maybe have a look at the screen and try to imagine the errors here and how would you correct that? Okay, so it's another page that some of you may have seen from our website. 
Okay, so I leave you with the lab. Thank you.